Good morning, everyone. I am Leslie, and I am going to be talking to you guys today about what in the world do coaches do anyways? <laughs> and I'm super excited to talk about this topic because I have to be honest with you, I had so many misconceptions about what a beach body coach is and what it takes to be a beach body coach. I literally had zero clue. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is Leslie Sullivan. I am 36 years old. I live in Eastern Washington. Um, my husband is a busy potato farmer who is currently in harvest, so I'm living that harvest widow life right now, which is super fun. Um, we have a big blended family, so we've both been divorced before. So we have four kids all together, ranging from five to 13. Gosh, it feels so weird saying you have a 13 year old. Um, but I want to tell you a little bit about where I was before Beachbody came into my life because I think that is a really, really important piece of my story. Um, and I'm going to take you back a little bit. So um, I spent most of my 20s, gosh, doesn't that seem like it was a long time ago? <laughs> um, most of my 20s in a very toxic marriage. And I guess so I learned very early how to put on that fake smile and fake it till you make it right and make it make everyone seem like everything's okay um, but so I spent most of my 20s in a very toxic marriage um, I did get divorced um, right before I turned 30 um, I had a son with my ex and so I was learning to manage that um, and um, you know I had remarried to this great guy who had two kids and we were, you know, we were navigating co-parenting and we were just trying to like pick up the pieces of our family, you know, like divorce causes a lot of pain and, um, you know, we were both broken, our kids, you know, had hurts that they had to heal and, um, Life was a little rough, okay? Um, I did find myself in a trauma uh, therapist's office, um, thankfully, um, when I got pregnant with my daughter because I had reached out about possibly having postpartum depression again. And um, thankfully, I found an amazing trauma therapist. And I'll tell you what, I worked my tail off in there. Uh, trauma therapy was definitely one of the hardest things I've ever done in my whole life. However, it did quite the number in my body. And that, coupled with antidepressants, anti-anxiety meds, anti-nightmare meds, all the meds they give you, um, and just the stress of going through the therapy, I had gained 50 pounds. 50 pounds in a very short amount of time, like probably a year and a half. And I hated my reflection you guys like when I stood in the mirror I didn't recognize that girl I didn't even know who she was and it wasn't just about the weight you know it was about who I had become you know I had these people in my life calling me a survivor an overcomer for getting out of a toxic marriage but I didn't feel like any of those things all I saw was this broken woman in the mirror. That's all I saw. And, you know, I remember just feeling a great weight of shame about where I had allowed myself to go, like how I had treated my body, you know, because every night I was eating my feelings. I struggled with emotional eating big time, big time guys. I don't, I don't even think I knew what emotional eating was. Like, I think I thought emotional eating was like, you get a carton of ice cream after your boyfriend breaks up with you and you eat it all in one sitting. No, um, I was hitting the drive-thru every single day. I was coming, you know, home at night and mindlessly snacking. I was overeating to the point where I just felt full and sick. I was trying to fill this need in me for something and it sure wasn't hunger. It wasn't hunger. <laughs> Um, and then, oh my gosh, the wine, the wine, it's always the wine, right? I mean, I would count down until it was like socially acceptable to pour a glass of wine, like five o'clock, right? I could start making dinner, 
you can have a glass of wine when you make dinner. And I was just coping with life. That's all I was doing. I was coping. I was numbing out. Um, I napped every single day. I didn't have the energy to play with my kids. It tears me up to think about my little girl coming up to me saying, Mommy, take me to the park. Not right now. Mommy's too tired. Mommy has a headache. Maybe later. But that's where I was at. That's where I was at. I faked illnesses to not go to parties. I didn't want to get dressed. I didn't want to have to figure out what I was going to wear. And then, if, even if I did get dressed to go to a party, you know, I spent the whole night tugging at myself, worrying about myself, and comparing myself to every single woman in the room. She's prettier, she's skinnier, she's sexier, she's a better mom, she's got it all together. I mean, literally they say, you know, comparison is the thief of all joy. Comparison stole all my joy. <laughs> so, I saw my coach sharing on social media, right? And she's posting that she's working out, and I see her losing weight um, on Facebook. And we didn't really know each other that well. And I'm going to be real vulnerable with you guys right now, okay? <laughs> because... Um, you think I would see this post and be like, yeah, good for her, girl. No, no. I was the mean girl. I was the mean girl. Okay, so I was totally hating on her. Like, I was, you know, jealous. I was so jealous. And I would, oh, another fitness post. Oh, yep, mm -hmm. you worked out again today. Yay, you. You know, and she'd post her transformation photos, and I would pick them apart, like, Oh, they're probably photoshopped. There's no way she lost that much weight. I was mean. I was mean. I mean, I didn't say it to her <laughs> inside. I was mean. And the truth is, hurting people hurt people. And that's where I was. I wanted what she had. I wanted it so bad, you guys. And finally, I reached that sweet spot. And you'll figure out what that sweet spot is. And hopefully you've reached that sweet spot. But you just throw your hands up in the air. And you say, you know what? Enough is enough. Like, I cannot live my life like this anymore. This isn't living. I'm surviving. I'm not living. Enough is enough. And that is when you have to jump. That is when you have to change. Okay? And so I reached out to her. She invited me to a 30-day group. She invited me to the coaching opportunity because she saw value in me. Just like someone saw value in you by inviting you here today. And I said yes. I said yes. <sighs> but I still had no idea what a coach did. <laughs> and um, I want to tell you, first of all, one misconception I had was that I was going to have to sell everything to my friends and family. And we share, we don't sell, okay? And you guys are going to hear that probably a lot today. But it's true. We share, we don't sell. We don't spam our friends and family. We don't post a bunch of ads. We don't post any ads on our Facebook with, hey, buy this for $30. You know, we don't do that. Um, it's just not how we roll, you guys. It's not how we roll, which is good, because that's not who I am. That's not who I am. Um, but we do share. We share our journey. And that can be equally as scary. Sure, that can be scary too. I was the girl that cared way too much about what other people thought. I needed other people's approval. I noticed how many likes my post got. I noticed who liked it and who didn't. I would have anxiety about why they didn't like my post. Maybe they were mad at me. Maybe they don't like me anymore. It was ridiculous. It was, it was bad. <laughs> I've come a, a really long way, I'll tell you that. Um, and I sure in the heck didn't feel comfortable labeling myself as a coach. As a coach? Who in their right mind would have me coach them?
okay? I was 50 pounds overweight, I was depressed, I was anxious, and I was checked out, and I was coping with food and alcohol. Oh, does that sound like a health and fitness coach to you? Who's gonna have me coach them? So I thought that I wasn't qualified to be a health and fitness coach, to be a beach body coach. I didn't think I was qualified. But do you know what I was? I was relatable. And perfection is not relatable. And it's not even attainable. So if you're waiting until you have the perfect body, or you have it all together, or all your ducks are in a row, it's just never gonna happen, girl. It's just, oh, or guy. <laughs> it's just never gonna happen. People want real. And I have learned that just over and over again over the last, um, I've been coaching for about a little over a year. And I have learned that people want real. You get on Facebook, what do you see? You either see negativity and hate or you see the highlight reel. That's what we call it, the highlight reel. I have the perfect house and the perfect husband and the perfect kids and the perfect manicure. It's not real. It's not real. And all it does is make you feel inadequate for not having the perfect house or the perfect husband or the perfect kids. People want real. They want to know that they're normal and that they're not alone. There's these two magical, magical world words that I have learned in the world of coaching and they are me too. Me too. When you share yourself, you share your journey and someone relates with you and they say, oh my gosh, me too. It's a pretty, pretty awesome thing. Um, so we get to show up and be seen. We get to be vulnerable. We get to let ourselves be seen authentically just how we are. We get to encourage people. We get to build relationships, real authentic friendships with people. We get to add value to people's lives. I've made friendships all across the United States. We get to show them that what we are doing actually works. We are all, and I tell my girls this from the beginning, beach body success stories in the making. Right from the beginning. And that is the ultimate accountability. Because when you are a coach, you are gonna lead by example. And that was a great feeling, knowing that I had that accountability. And along the way, as we're sharing, we breadcrumb our stories. We don't vomit our stories, okay? But we breadcrumb them. We leave little trails, little pieces, little clues of who we were and who we are now, or what we're going through now, or what we're starting, and we relate to people. And you know what happens? I find the Leslie's of a year ago. And you're gonna find your people. You're gonna find the people who need to hear your story. Because I guarantee you that people need to hear your story. Whether you think you have an amazing story or a boring story, trust me, someone needs to hear your words. We are spreading hope. You wanna know what a coach does? Coaches spread hope. Coaches change lives. That's what coaches do. And we're doing that by inviting them to join us on this journey, their own journey, you know? And gosh, I remember I was probably like three or four weeks in and um, a friend of mine hadn't seen me yet and she was like, there's something about you that has changed. And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, it's like someone turned a light on inside you. And I will never forget those words. Like someone turned a light on inside me. I didn't have to be perfect. I didn't have to look a certain way. I had something to share. Something was happening inside me. And I knew exactly what I needed to share. And how could you not share it? How could you not share that? That light, that spark, 
that shine that comes back into your eyes. You want to share it with everyone you know. Your family, your friends, anybody who will listen. Because you have something that has changed your life to such a degree that you can't keep it in. And you won't. <laughs> you can't. Okay, so I have to address one last thing and then I'll shut up, okay? <laughs> Um, because I get this question a lot. As a beach body coach, do I have to share half naked photos of myself on the internet? Oh my gosh, I get asked this all the time. <laughs> okay, so first of all, you get to decide what you wear in your transformation photos, okay? So if you feel comfortable in a sports bra and shorts, awesome. If you feel feel good in a swimsuit, <laughs> you don't feel good in it, but you're like, hey, I, I'm, I'm going to put it on, I'm going to rock it. Go for it. If you don't and, you, and all you can do is put on a t-shirt, that's okay too, okay? The reason people wear less clothes is so they can show more results because the results are going to happen. They are going to happen, you guys. But I get the hesitation. I get the fear. And I remember before I even considered sharing those photos how scared I was to share them. Like, throw up scared. Like, freak out scared <laughs> and I mean I was ashamed of them when my husband took my before pictures you guys <sighs> I remember that day like so clearly he I put on my clothes he took the pictures I looked at him and I just felt disgust at myself I like ran to my bathroom I kept it together in front of my kids I jumped in the shower you know, I turned on the water and I just collapsed on the floor. And I was just crying. Like tears were just running down my face. I was so angry at myself. I couldn't believe that I had let myself like get to the level where I was where I just didn't even care about taking care of myself anymore. And I just laid there in a ball in the shower crying for what seemed like forever. My poor husband was outside on the other side of the shower curtain saying, Babe, I think you're beautiful. Babe, you're beautiful. It's okay. It's going to be okay. You're beautiful. But I didn't feel beautiful. <sighs> Let me tell you, if you would have asked me that day if I would have ever shared those pictures, I would have told you no, <laughs> but now I do. And when I first posted it, I was about six, seven weeks into my transformation or into the program and I had lost about 15 pounds and I felt amazing. I felt amazing. I was really, really proud of myself, but I was still scared to share you know, I still wanted to puke. I was like, oh, maybe I should delete them. I don't know. <laughs> but then I thought of something. And I want you to remember this. What if my coach wouldn't have shared her pictures? What if she listened to the lies and the fear that she'd just be judged if she stepped out of her comfort zone? What if she listened to that? What if she listened to that and didn't share her pictures or her stories over and over again? Where would I be? I could tell you, I can tell you where I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be right here. I wouldn't be talking to all of you. I wouldn't have lost 40 pounds. I wouldn't have gotten off blood pressure meds after being on them for 10 years. I wouldn't have reduced my scripts from 10 to 2. I wouldn't be happy. My marriage wouldn't be healthy. I wouldn't have just paid off my car with my coaching income, you guys. I just paid off my car with my coaching income. How cool is that? I wouldn't have traveled to awesome places and met such amazing people and I wouldn't have this incredible tribe and support system that when I go off the grid for 24 hours because I've had a bad day, they're right there to pick me up off my face and love me unconditionally. 
every single time. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be here. And I wouldn't have the privilege of changing someone's life. Like she changed mine. Because when you change someone's life for the very first time, you'll be hooked. It's an incredible feeling knowing that your story had that impact on someone else. So, is it still scary sometimes putting yourself out there? Absolutely. Does it get easier? Absolutely. But when my finger hovers over that post button and I start to listen to the lies or the fear that I'm going to be judged or maybe I shouldn't share this or I'm not perfect or whatever the lie or the fear is, I think my coach saved my life and now my story has the power to save someone else's. And that's why I always hit post. That's why I share. And that's why I will continue to share. And that, that, that guys, that's what we do. That is exactly what a beach body coach does. We share and we change lives. It's a pretty amazing job. So I'm glad you guys tuned in with me today. Thank you for joining me. If you have questions, post them below and I'll be happy to answer. Talk to you guys later. Bye.